this is the prize that's going to be given to someone who buys the corporate citizen playbook or the YouTube course. I will let you know who wins this the 1st of July. Alrighty, so let's just talk about how you can get into the course. The corporate citizen playbook, power book, you can do a one and done or you can get on the payment plan. How to make a lot of money from a small YouTube channel. You can do a one and done and get on the payment plan. I'm about to explain to you why you want the corporate citizen playbook power book. Number one, you will get the YouTube course as well, and you will get any and everything else that I create in the year 2023. So if I write a book, I create any more courses, which I guarantee you there's more coming, you will get all of that. And also the way that this is set up, the corporate citizen playbook power book it's set up to teach you how to build a holding company, how to have operating companies, how to set up your corporate banking, how to set up your first operating company, and how to start getting on the path of business credit. Now, one of the things is, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you, are you gonna take these courses and next month you're gonna be making 20, $30,000 per month? No, it's not gonna happen. But let's go a little further ahead and let's say, this time next year, you get in, you're going to learn so much that you could be one of the people making twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 per month. I will have people who will do that. And then some people, it'll take a little longer. But I want you to start thinking in the greater scheme of your life. I want you to start thinking about not just today, but tomorrow and the year after and the year after and the year after. Because I have a very important video that's coming up after this commercial that's going to be getting into the deepness of building businesses, making money, and you want to be part of it. So once again, the YouTube channel, you can do the one payment or you can do the payment plan, the corporate citizen uh, playbook power book. You could do the one and done and the payment plan. And this is how you can get in and the access to these courses will be in the description box and in the first comment. And once again, you need to go ahead and get in because the sooner that you start is the sooner that you'll start realizing your dreams and ambitions. So that's all I got for you. So let's roll into this next wonderful video. Man, I used to be so broke. I'm talking broke, broke. I'm talking about so broke that I didn't have enough money to put gas in my car to get to work. And that was a long, long, long time ago. This is nothing recent, but one of the big issues that I had was I was not financially literate. I was not financially educated. I, I didn't really have huge spending problems. My big problem was life costed too much. I would remember living in these apartments and doing certain things because I had to, not because I wanted to, because I had to. And I remember the fall when I had the marital breakdown, got divorced, moving into the boarding house. And for the first two years I was in that boarding house, I was pissed off. I was extremely pissed off. I was just, I was upset at everyone. I was upset at my ex. I was upset at the world. I was upset at my friends because here's the thing. I never cheated on my wife. I never abused my wife. I went to work Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday through Sunday. And I was never without a job. There was a period in my life that I worked seven days a week for two years. Never missed a day. So from where I was constructed, I felt I was a good person. I was hardworking, was loyal to my then wife. Um, I thought I was a good father. And... This is one of the reasons I was so pissed off because 
I lost my job. I lost my home. I lost my family. And here's something else too. When I was in that boarding house, I used to shave. And the police and the people in the neighborhood thought I was the police because I would shave. I would literally have folks who knew that I lived in the neighborhood and it would be behind me. I, I see what you're doing, Mr. Officer. I see you're working on your job. I got you. I mean, this 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 was one of the highest forms of harassment, friendly harassment. They never did anything to me. And they thought I was a police officer, so they never touched me. They never threatened me. And there was this period of just being broke, just broke without money, without sanctuary. And I mean, I had a lot of issues. I had so many things that would happen I just simply didn't have the money to take care of these issues. And then about 22 months into it, I was in the bathroom and I, it was a morning of reckoning. It was a morning where I actually had to be accountable. I had to be accountable and I was looking in the mirror and this realization that hit me and it, to this day, I'll never forget it. The reason that you're living in this house isn't because of your ex-wife. The reason you're living in this house is you don't have any money. And that realization, that moment of epiphany just literally came down on me like a ton of bricks. That's how the truth operates. It was a moment of absolute clarity. It was really, really clear in my mind. And two weeks later, I had a job. And this job, all this money just went straight to the bank. And this was when I got my first pivotal lesson of going from broke to $250,000 a year. I never touched that money. I just went ahead. It was my first emergency fund in life. Actually, that's not true. I kind of had somewhat of an emergency fund because when I was in the military, first Sergeant Branch, rest in peace, because I know he's gone. I know Branch is gone. He was like, go out and get some U.S. savings bonds. So I used to buy a $100 bond that cost me $50 per month, and I would send them home, and that was my Somewhat, that's how I got my first car, using those savings bonds, because I think I had like 3500 once I went in and cashed them in, because the older bonds got me more money than the newer bonds. And, um, but this was my first official savings account. And what do I mean by first official savings account? This was my first savings account that was a plan that was part of a plan. Cause I said, all right, after I got out the bathroom, I went in, I went to work. I said, all right, I'm gonna get me a part-time job and I'm going to save every penny of it. So in case something else happens, I will have some money to fall back on. And I worked that job and I was getting like 200, like after taxes, I think it was like 220 every other weekend because I worked every other weekend. So I was putting $440 in the bank every month. And I started that about 12 months before I got let go from PowerTel. And that money is the money that allowed me to conduct Scheme Incorporated. That's what I called my plan to get another job because I knew my issue. Because once again, in the military, I was in the military, I tried to start several businesses, they all failed. So I, I, I inherently knew that my path to salvation was to get a job. But I needed a job that paid me enough money because I think when I was in that boarding house, 
I think because I was working at Labor Ready, Labor Force, maybe 17, 18,000 per year with all the work I was doing. And then I got on rent a crate and rent a crate paid me 38,500 bucks. Adjusted for inflation, that would be like rolling into a job today making 65. That was the most money that I had ever gotten for a job that I was working. And that opened up the door because it wasn't the money that was the most critical thing. When I was at rent a crate, I started to meet a lot of enterprising people. I started to meet people. I remember this one couple that I met and this was, let's, let's go ahead and go rent a crate panel systems and business environments. Let's put them all together because there's a lot of overlap. And I started to meet people who own companies and I knew people as a kid who owned companies, but I started to meet people who own companies at an adult level. And I remember I met this couple fairly young because they were younger than I was at the time. And they own this uh, sanitation business, which I still see the trucks running around Atlanta today. I don't know if they still own it, but that would be 20 something years of ownership. And I started to network and I remember, and this is the story that got me in the office furniture. I was at rent crate and we were doing some promotions at Neocon, which was a trade show for people who sold stuff to office buildings. There was, this is where I met my friend Mario Fraley. This is, and I was there presenting and I was just talking. And I remember there was a night and they used to serve us drinks. They served us real alcohol. And I remember one night there was this girl. First time I ever seen this girl in my life. And she was drunk off her ass. She was just, she was lit. She was drunk. And um, something said, Glendon, watch over her. So, I went ahead, I kind of hung her, because she was pretty. Her name was Lynn Fraley. Not Mar not Lynn Fraley. Lynn, we'll leave her last name out of it. And um, I watched over her, and I was like, you know, I got I got. It's like, where are you staying? She says, oh, I'm in the hotel upstairs. Here's my room key. Ha, 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 ha. And she gave me her room key, and I took her to her room. And then I, I just put her to bed. She laid down, bam, instantly passed out. And I just kind of hung out, walked on the balcony, hung out for a while. And about three o'clock, she woke up. And she was like very hungover, but sober. And she woke up and she's like, what happened? And um, this, this story is kind of confused because at the bar, when she was still drunk, she was like, I sell office furniture and I made $185,000 last year. And I was like, wow. Because, you know, at that time, I did not know anyone who made that kind of money. And this is one of the reasons that I decided to look out for her. And I looked over her, put her in the bed, left her fully clothed. And then she's like, man, you brought me to my room? And you know, she knew she was clothed, nothing happened, and she was like, wow. And we became the best of friends, and then she pulled me into her world. And that was my first networking connection with someone who can actually do something, you know? You know, Lynn just put in a word with um, some people, and this is how I got into selling office furniture. Uh, I remember the conversation and dude didn't even look at my resume. I literally just walked in, got this job by association. And um, 
it, it was, and that was essentially how I got the job before the job with the office furniture. They didn't even look, they knew me because of my connections, because of the circles I was running at. And I learned that relationships were critically important and critically important to getting me out of my situation. And then this is how I worked my way up to business environments. And because I want you to think this, this happened really, really fast because this happened much faster than the time I was in the boarding house. I was in the boarding house three years and this happened like rent a crate, panel systems, business environments, boom, 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 boom. And then my first real business opportunity had a client. It's like, we got all this used furniture. If you help us sell it, we'll buy new furniture from you. Boom. First business made $250,000. That first business changed my life because up until, um, 2011 going into 2012, I think when I got to 2012, I think I had about $340,000 in the bank. I think it gets a little fuzzy, but that source, that, that, that source of income, that source of money that funded the uh, storage auction business that funded the YouTube business. Uh, I have not been anywhere close to broke. 20 something, 24 years. And that that's one of the reasons that I have the views about money. Cause I know the power of having cash on you, you know, um, Grant Cardone in many, in many regards is a charlatan cash is not trash because with 80% of the population making less than 35,000, 80% of the population would love to have $50,000 cash. I know this for a fact, because when I was that broke person, man, if I could have had $50,000 cash legally, it would have changed my life. And essentially that money was the seed money. Cause until I got to 2012, in my first seven figure year and after taxes, because I had that 340 and a million dollars in the bank. And I was living pretty frugally. I had a paid off car. My bills were, I didn't really have any bills. I didn't, I didn't have any credit card debt. I have sold my houses. All I had was money. I had a lot of money. And that was the beginning of all the stuff that you guys see today. And this is one of the reasons that like, you know, I think I, I talked about in some videos, I was going to get into real estate. Honestly, I would need more money before I let that money go because that money has always been, it's, it's more money now. It's, it's a lot more money. And essentially from a personal experience level, if I have that money, I know I'll always be safe and protected. And that's one of the reasons that I like, I let go a bunch of money to get in the car rental business and, you know, through the holding company strategy and all this other stuff that really wasn't that big of a deal. But one of the things that I really, really am thankful for and I enjoy is all of these lessons that I have learned, all of these lessons that I have absorbed, all of these lessons that I have personally been through and I have learned and I know because, you know, there, there's a lot of talk on the internet about, you know, going into this business and then quitting your job 
And this is one of the reasons that I don't talk about that, because essentially I know that the beginning of your business is going to be challenging. It's going to be stressful and it's going to be hard. And I know that if you keep your job, you will have money to buy food, to pay your bills. And then th this leaves the money in the business to grow the business. Cause this is something I've consistently said. If I needed to go out and buy a million dollar warehouse, I could do it. I could just do it straight off cash flow if I had that need. So there's always, you know, if I need something for my business, I just get it because I don't have to wait to get paid to get it. And this is one of the things that I reason I preach the things that I preach, the things I say is from personal experience, knowing that I have been through these things and knowing that the power of having this, this is one of the reasons like I got $1.2 million in credit, like 500,000 in personal credit, 750,000 in business credit. And I don't have nothing on it. And I consistently see videos, I consistently see videos like you should use this credit to invest. And personally, I know that a lot of businesses can be started for, I'll say, under 20,000, a lot of businesses. And that's that's the key, because this this is the personal experience talking. When you have a business that you have to keep borrowing money to keep that business going, you're, you're, you're pretty much on suicide watch. But if you're running a business that makes cash and consistently cash, then that cash can start to stack up. And I, I see so much bad business advice on the internet. You know, Grant Cardone, cash is trash, Grant Cardone. I couldn't survive on 400,000 I'm like, 95% of America doesn't make $400,000 a year. If most of America got $250,000 income boost like this, this would be a different country literally overnight. And, you know, I see, like I said, a lot, of, and this is one of the reasons, because I put up a video for those, because I got people, it's like, hey, I know how to manage money. I got six figures. I got... You know, I've even had, I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this. I've had NBA players and NFL players contact me through this YouTube channel. And the advice has always been the same. Hey, you need to get on the budget and you need to start a business that you know how to run. And I, I've told all of the guys, it's like when you start giving people access to your money where they can start doing stuff, this is how you're going to end up broke because number one, they ain't taking those hits. They're not on that field and they're not going to respect your money in the high regard that you respect. And one of the NFL players, he was like, I wish I had met you before I got into some business dealings. Cause at the moment I've lost about $4 million for the very thing you just told me not to do. And I told all of them, never give anyone access to your checking account. If there's a business deal, you need to sign a check. You need to be aware of it. Never, never, never give anyone access to your checking account because this is when you will find out who people are. So I've helped in NFL players, players. I've helped NBA players. And once again, I'm not mentioning any names because these guys came to me in some various and interesting ways. And um, it, it was interesting with the businesses and things that I helped them create, the things that I helped them do. So once again, everything's the same because I remember one NFL player was like, I want to do this, I want to do this. And I said, look, you can't do that. And yes, you're a highly paid athlete, but you cannot do the things you want to do because you simply don't have enough money. And he was like, he said, no one ever talks to me like this. No one. I was like, look, here's the thing. You're in the NFL and you know what the NFL stands for? Not for long. 
you only have, you know, if you get 10 years in the NFL, that's great, you know. And what you want to do is to situate yourself and create income. Because the, the before I met these guys in the NBA and NFL, I did not know what an NFL's life, player's life was. Like during the season, they have no time for nothing. They can't, they have no, they're at practice, they're working out. And, you know, their off season, it kind of calms down a little bit. But essentially, um, it, it, it's a lot more than I thought it was. And everyone that I've worked with has made more money, whether they were in the NBA, where they were in NFL. And uh, I remember one of the NFL guys, because uh, this is what, you know, he was talking about. It's like, you've been doing a lot of wild and crazy stuff, man. Because, you know, I, I was putting out a lot of stuff. And um, one of the things that I'm proud to say is I'm able to help people because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to mess around. And this, this, this goes back to this um, keeping your job. I mean, a lot of people will tell you, because I remember with this one NFL player, I was like, look, you need to get on the budget. You need to not hang out with the quarterback. The quarterback making 20 mil a year, you're not. And I had a very, you know, I actually do got pissed off. And about two weeks later, he's like, I was out. And um, it was my turn to pay for the round of drinks. And it was everybody in the club. He said, that cost me like 4,500 bucks. And then I remember what you were saying. And if I keep spending money like that, I'm not going to have no money. He came back because he had a personal experience that was reflective of what I told him. And uh, he started to, he got on the budget and then we started to work together. And one of the things that just happens is because I went through all of these personal experiences, I cannot come on YouTube and say, do this. Cause like literally I got a video that's going to come up on mad money. That's just crazy because I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to not have. I know what it's like to be hungry. And those lessons and those things of going through that, that whole thing, this is one of the reasons that I just cannot come here on the internet and viciously lie. Viciously lie to you and talk about things that I fundamentally know from a principle and framework thing just don't work. And, you know, I'm going to be having more of these conversations about, you know, going because essentially at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is the is is, you know, someone was talking about F you money. Right. Um, if you can get. If you're a normal, regular American, you can get a hundred K cash. Let me go ahead and give you the perspective. You don't have a car payment. You don't have credit card bills. You don't have student loan bills. And you, you you're you're pretty much don't have a lot of you, you have hardly any debt or no debt. And you have one hundred K in the bank. For the average person. For the average normal person, that's F you money. Now, many people will say you need to have millions to have F you money. And once again, I was operating off a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget that allowed me to start multiple businesses to live well to drive i've not driven a car that wasn't an audi a bmw or a porsche personal car since 2000 since 2000 so i'm telling you if you can go ahead and get yourself in the position where you can get $100,000 cash in the bank, cash money, that's F you money. 
not multiple millions, not dripping, you know, spending $500,000 for a watch. And that, that is fantasy money. But F you money from a practical perspective, 100K, because the thing is, and this is one of the things I learned, like I said, we're gonna be having more of these conversations, is the orientation, because I got the job at Renecrate, but more important than the job at Renecrate were the relationships that getting that job opened the door for me to have. Because I wouldn't be here without those relationships. Those relationships were worth more than money. And that's one of the things that you have to do because this is one of the things. Because there's a lot of people on the internet who like to talk about how rich people live, right? They don't know any rich people. They know about rich people. They can read about rich people, but they don't know. And when I say no rich people, I'm talking about, hey, man, let's go to dinner. Bring, bring, bring. You can call them up. You can hit their phone number. You can actually meet with them. Not that you know what they're doing, because I, I see it in the comments all the time. They're like, yeah, I work for someone. Yeah, you work for someone, but do you actually know this person? I have lived next to people in paid off houses that I would go over to their house and have coffee and crumpets because we are friends. And once again, you know, a lot of folks don't know rich people. They assume they know about rich people. They assume because Grant Cardone put up a video and he got checked by a CPA who was saying, these things are just not gonna work for you if you're an average person. And I 100% agree with the CPA. Because if you're an average person, they're simply not going to work. So we're gonna be having more conversations like this, but this is one of the reasons that, you know, $250,000 is, because it freed me, it freed me, it liberated me, it, it, it left it. I got to lead the masses. It wasn't millions. And I would say for the average American, you get your hands in the right circumstances, a hundred K. Cause like if you get a hundred hands on a hundred K, but you have debt of like half a million, that's not the same. And this is one of the reasons that I have consciously kept a very low debt load. I just like don't go out and get into a bunch of debt. Just don't unless it's a business debt or it makes sense. I just typically avoid getting into a lot of debt. So hopefully you enjoyed this little conversation. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. And also we got a lot of stuff that's going on with the YouTube training in the corporate citizen playbook. And there's payment plans for the YouTube training and there's payment plans for the corporate citizen playbook. Now, this is one of the big reasons that most of you don't want to take action. You're scared of failing. And that could be a good fear for you. That could be a good fear for you. But I'm here to tell you, the later that you start, the way to get started, the later your success will come. So to get into this training, go below. It's going to be in the description box and it will be in that first comment. My name is Glendon Cameron. We'll be having more of these conversations and I will talk to you guys in the next one.